Hello and welcome to Hard Talk India. With churches being bombed, graves desecrated and priests beaten up and killed, is the Indian Christian community under attack or is the church itself guilty of conversion by inducement and of spreading a line derogatory of the Hindu faith? With me is the new head of the Catholic Bishops Conference in India, the Archbishop of Trivandrum, the Right Reverend Cyril Mar Bersadios. Archbishop Bersadios, bombs in churches in Goa, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, incidents against Christians in Agra, Mathura, Jhansi, Bijnor, Panipat, Ahmedabad, Nasik. Is the Indian Christian community under attack? Yes. And is there a pattern behind this attack? Yes, I believe. Who is responsible? We have yet to identify a lot of talk, but we should get more evidence to ident identify the groups. But just so that we are completely clear, you are saying that Indian Christians today are under attack. Yeah, I, I should say uh, the underlying forces behind these attacks would suggest to that. And you have no doubt in your mind that this is some sort of conspiracy, not a coincidence? Certainly not a coincidence. But the extent of conspiracy, we have it still to study. If this is the situation, then what is the mood of the Christian community in the country today? Are they insecure? Are they threatened? Are they scared? The community as a whole, I should say, at the lower strata, they may be a little uh, threatened. But uh, as a whole, we don't get that alarmed. But are they feeling insecure? Insecure in the sense, if this is growing, certainly this will be uh, dangerous for the community. All right, you said the community is under attack. You said there is a pattern behind these attacks. Is there a hand behind the pattern? The pattern we see is that uh, always the Christian personnel, missionary personnel, and the institutions are on attack. But incidents may vary according to the constituents. Therefore, this is very common that the Christians' institutions are attacked. Therefore, this must have some link, but common who, link. Who is doing this, Archbishop? Normally, it is reported in, in many papers that certain Hindu organizations are behind this. Let me be blunt. Are you saying that the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, the Bajarang Dal, in your opinion, are connected either directly or indirectly, closely or from far? I should say at least indirectly connected because of the persuasions and the hate campaign they are making. For example, today's paper, the Asian Age, has reported uh, a very serious incident in Gujarat, that uh, people going there and threatening the missionaries. Uh, they were not serving the Christians there. Only the um, drought uh, affected people were helped, and they said foreigners have nothing to do with help for the Indians. So you believe as head of the Catholic Bishops' Conference, that either the Vishwahandu Parishad or the Bajrang Dal or people closely connected with it are instigating in one way or another the attacks against the Christian community? Uh, I think at least the hate campaign that's going on, which, for which we have evidence in the in literature, for example, the books they are, written, they are writing. And these are connected to the Vishwahandu Parishad? Yes, certainly. So you have actually, in your mind, no doubt that the VHP is involved, despite the fact that the vice president of the VHP denies it. Uh, I would say they, uh, they cannot disown uh, the responsibility by saying they are not connected with it, because we cannot pinpoint this incident is instigated by them. Okay. But uh, the hatred that is spread, certainly some of the literature uh, of these uh, uh, different organizations, and that also I cannot directly affirm whether VHP is connected with this. But you believe and suspect it is connected? Uh, I have reasons to believe. Okay, the government line put forward by senior leaders of the ruling party, the Bhartiya Janata Party, and in fact particularly by the Home Minister, is that the Pakistani ISI is involved. Do you believe that to be the case? I, uh, I have no evidence to believe that. You have no evidence to believe, believe it that. whatsoever? Uh, no. Do you in fact suspect, as some other voices in the church have said, that this is a smoke screen that is being put up, so that in yeah. fact the real culprits? Uh, that is the uh, reactions from some quarters. 
just to distract and to disown the responsibility. Is that your personal opinion as well? My opinion is, as far as we don't have evidence to put it on somebody else, we should try to investigate and do our responsibility. So as far as you're concerned, it's by no means proven as yet that the ISI is yes, involved. Yes. The press, or at least certain sections of the press, have said that the attacks against the Christian community have escalated since the BJP came to power in 1998. Do you believe that the two events are in some way connected? The one thing we can be sure that the uh, BJP, the political party, is very much connected with these organizations. So the influence of these organizations on the BJP we cannot deny. I think it is clear they have connections, links with these organizations. But to be neutral and secular, the government has to be little more independent on their own. But you are clearly suggesting, Archbishop, that the, breath, the belief in some sections of the press that there is a connection between the BJP coming to power and the escalation of attacks against the Christian community, that connection is one that you seem to agree with. Uh, I would say, at least uh, contextually, factually, that's the situation. Factually, that is the situation. Is the situation. Let me put something to you. Keshu Bhai Patel, the BJP Chief Minister of Gujarat, has said that Christians are foreigners. Yes. K.S. Sudarshan, the new head of the Rashtriya Swamsevak Sangh, has spoken about a forthcoming epic battle between Hindus and non-Hindus. Several senior officials of the Bajrang Dal in Uttar Pradesh have said that Christians should be ousted from the country. How do you react to such statements by the people who are involved in the Sangh Parivar? Uh, it is totally baseless. Second, it is not uh, true that Christians are foreigners. Therefore, all these statements are coming out of prejudice or I would say even ignorance. Do you react to them with anger? No. I have sympathy that they don't study the history. But you're absolutely certain that these people are making mischief? Uh, I am sure uh, that they are uh, making these statements without studying the history of India, the makeup of India, and the role of Christians in India. Let me put something else to you. Govindacharya, a general secretary of the Bharatiya Janata Party and perhaps one of its most important senior officials has gone on record to say that the church in Tripura is involved with terrorists and that it is involved in what he called ethnic cleansing. How do you respond to that? I don't think because the church has never involved in any of this militancy and uh, it will never encourage uh, terrorism. The church is against it. If we have any evidence, the church should condemn it. Is there any discrimination on the attitude of the church in Tripura between Christians and non-Christians? I don't think. Don't think or are you saying no? Which are you saying? I am saying that uh, the situation in Tripura, I have not studied closely, but certainly the church, as it has been uh, given mandate of preaching the gospel, is not involving in terrorism. So when people like Govindacharya say that the church is involved in ethnic cleansing, the church is involved in terrorism, what do you say back to them as the head of the Catholic Church in India? He has to prove it. Do you say anything more? Uh, I would say, I personally as the head of the church, Catholic Church, I would say the church will never get involved in terrorism. But do you condemn such statements or are you simply saying he has to prove it which sounds as if you have a neutral opinion on the matter? No, not neutral opinion. Uh, in this, I am very strong. The church will never encourage terrorism, not merely in the Northeast, but nowhere in the world. And uh, therefore, if it, anything happens, the church has to study, and that will certainly condemn it. Let me quote to you something that your predecessor, the late Archbishop Delastic, said in what is widely believed to have been his last interview before he died. He said that hearing these accusations of the church, hearing these allegations leveled against the church, he said, today I feel ashamed to be Indian. Do you share those sentiments? Yeah, I don't share that uh, sentiment. I, I feel proud of being Indian and uh, the situation that is created in India, I feel rather uh, sad about it. So there's a significant difference between your response and that of your predecessor. That I cannot judge if somebody sees a difference, but my point of view is I am not ashamed of being an Indian. But are you saddened and hurt by these accusations against the church? Certainly. Now, 
the Prime Minister has repeatedly said that he wants all the state governments to ensure the highest level of security to the community and to the Christian churches in particular. Yeah. But given the trauma and given the sense of insecurity that you said the community is feeling, is this in your eyes a sufficient response? I would say uh, the response or the declaration from the part of the, the Prime Minister is welcome. And uh, uh, to, to be effective, he cannot be satisfied with the declaration. He should do also something more than that in uh, giving the sense of, of security and What peace. more are you looking for from the Prime Minister? I would say you should uh, find out the root of these disturbances, and he should uh, employ his machinery uh, to, uh, to find out where, from where comes these difficulties. So you want him to thoroughly investigate, investigate. the matter? Not, only, not yeah. only leaving to the states, but the central government has a right and power to do it more effectively. Sometimes it's been said that, in fact, where the Prime Minister in his response fell short was that he didn't express his personal outrage and his strong condemnation of the attacks taking place. Do you feel that was something he should have done and didn't do? He could have done it. It would have been more pleasing uh, to the community and also it would have encouraged the community and uh, given more assurance of his promises. So are you in fact here today calling upon Mr. Vajpayee to express his outrage and condemnation of the attacks against Christians in India? Uh, I would uh, rather say I request uh, the Prime Minister to give more serious attention to the whole episode. You think he hasn't given sufficient attention? Uh, I think so. Now the Prime Minister when he went recently to Rome made a point of calling upon the Pope. It was widely interpreted that his wish was to reassure the Pope that the Christian community is not under attack. Did the Prime Minister succeed? Uh, I think he has uh, succeeded to the extent that he could give the impression that he is really uh, serious about the matter and he would take care of them. But now, where has he not succeeded? Uh, that uh, his promise should, can be taken into uh, account only when he follows it up with action. So you are saying that the Pope and the Vatican are waiting for the Prime Minister to follow up his promise with concrete action? I hope so. In other words, there is a need for concrete action in the eyes of the church. I hope so. One final question then about this issue. As you see things at the moment today, Archbishop, are they getting slowly better? Are they the same? Or are they in fact sadly but steadily deteriorating? Uh, it could be said it is deteriorating to the uh, extent that uh, no serious action is taken in spite of the admonition from the Prime Minister. Therefore, may, some states may take it seriously, but in some states, as for example today's report from the paper in Gujarat, it seems that uh, does not say taken seriously. Okay, Archbishop, we've spoken in some considerable length about how you and the Church see the situation. Let me now put to you how your critics view things and why they believe that the Church in fact is overreacting. Let's start with the sweep of incidents that have taken place in northern India. Your critics look at them and say that these are nothing more than ordinary criminal incidents. There is no communal motive and it's just a coincidence that some of the victims happen to be Christians. How do you respond to that interpretation? I would say uh, the explanation that they are criminal is correct. But it, it is uh, more uh, than that because there is a, uh, a common link uh, of uh, hatred towards these activities of the church today. Well, let me give you an example. They say that if you look at the incidents that have happened in the Mathura area, two, three or four at most have concerned Christian people. Yet in the year ending June the 15th, there have been some 48 murders in the Mathura region, some 45 dacoities. They say that the fact that only four affected Christians shows that the motive was not communal, it was criminal. The church, in insisting that it's communal, is exaggerating. We are not insisting that all the events were, com were communal. These incidents were communal. Let me go further. One of your strongest critics in this regard is Arun Shori, now a government minister. He argues that the church is not just overreacting, but that it is deliberately overreacting and exaggerating because he says the church wishes to create an international sense of concern about what's happening 
to Christians in India. He says, for example, take the Jabwa rape case. He admits that it's true that four of the people raped were nuns, but he says initially the church encouraged the belief that the rapists were Hindu and that the motive was communal. But after the Madhya Pradesh government's investigation established that at least 50% of the rapists were Christian and that the motive was a local dispute, the church did not correct itself. It stayed silent and it allowed the wrong impression that it had been perpetrated to remain. I don't agree with this statement nor with this explanation. Why? Because it's not true. But the details that have come out from the Madhya Pradesh government investigation do prove that at least 50% of the rapists in the Jabwa case were Christian. But, uh, but that doesn't solve the problem. But doesn't it that suggest that it wasn't a the, communal the, incident? The nuns were raped, of course, with the, the motivations of the attackers. Therefore, that doesn't uh, solve by adding up other incidents to that. But Archbishop, if 50% of the rapists were Christian, and if the motive was not communal, but a local dispute, doesn't it suggest that this was a crime, not an attack against Christians? It doesn't suggest, it doesn't suggest that. It, uh, it only means it was added to the other crimes. And uh, this could have its own motivation. So you're saying that people like Arun Shori are misinterpreting the evidence? Uh, I feel so. I'm sorry to say that, but I feel so. But it's not just Arun Shori. Arun Shori and now, in fact, Justice Wadhwa, who investigated the Graham Stain's grisly, ghastly murder, have gone on record to say that other incidents, those in Jhajar, Baripada, in Allahabad, in each of these cases, they say, absolutely nothing happened, but the church encouraged the impression that Hindu fundamentalists were attacking Christian people and Christian community property. Now, the gravity of the attacks on Christians will not be lessened or undermined by adding up other criminal activities. There's a, a wrong impression that because uh, all over the country there are this kind of dacoits uh, or uh, actions like that, these were not uh, 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 Christian attacks. You're saying attacks. that just because four incidents may have been criminal, not communal in intent, it doesn't mean that communal attacks against Christians aren't happening. Yeah, that's exactly the point. That's the point. Therefore, we, we could explain a lot. This is also one reason why I asked the government. It's not merely a question, a question of protecting Christians. The disintegration of the country is happening. And unless we, uh, we uh, nip in the bud, this will increase. You see, you talk about the disintegration of the country. Arun Shori says in his book, Harvesting Our Souls, which has just been published recently, that in fact it's not a question of Hindus or Hindu fanatics attacking the Christian church. He says that the Christian church is creating an echo chamber of atrocity uh, stories to create international concern. And he says that you are partly doing this to raise funds for conversion activities and missionary works. I totally disagree with that statement and opinion. Do you think that he is therefore prejudiced in his opinion? Uh, what else could we say? Let me come to the issue that perhaps lies at the bottom of all of this, the question of conversions. As you know, Archbishop, conversions is an issue that touches upon people's sensitivities very closely. It's something that gives offense when it's completely misunderstood. So let me put a simple but blunt question to you. Is the Christian church actively involved in converting Hindus and or tribals to Christianity? This has to be understood in its correct sense. Because we are using a word, conversion, with a lot of meanings. So all those who are speaking about conversion may not be speaking the same language. Are you indulging in conversions by means of allurement and inducement? Never. Absolutely never. never. Is that a categorical no? One thing. Second, conversion will never take place like that. Conversion is a very personal act, interior act, for us. But that's what you say. Let me point to you what your critics say. Your critics say that as far back as 1956, the Niyogi Committee was appointed by the Madhya Pradesh government and it established some 44 years ago that in Madhya Pradesh, even in hospitals, schools and leprosy homes, the Christian church was using its good work to seek converts. Now, if it could happen in 56, what guarantee is there that it's not still happening today? Uh, it, uh, it has never happened. Because conversion 
is not the act of the church. All what we are asked, our mandate is to give the good news which Jesus Christ uh, proclaimed to our people. Well, that's what you say, and, and I accept and, that, Archbishop. And, and the result will be certainly a change of heart, and a, cha and a change of heart will certainly reflect in one's mode of life. If play. that change of heart happens automatically, without inducement and allurement, no one can complain about it. But even in the case of Graham Staines, who was murdered in the most grisly and horrible circumstances, the Wadhwa Commission of Inquiry has established that he was involved in jungle camp baptismal practices, that he was involved in conversions, and he was doing it in a state where, in fact, to seek converts without giving prior notification to the government is expressly illegal and wrong. They could have taken action on that, if it was so. So you do concede that in converting or in involving himself in baptismal practices, Graham Staines was breaking the law in Orissa? No, I don't. The Wadhwa Commission report says that. Uh, Graham uh, Staines, uh, I, I, I would uh, like to state, he could never convert one. But the Wadhwa Commission he report was, quotes he, extensively he was, documentation he was, that he has sent to the Tidings newspaper in Australia, yeah. which they say proves that he was involved. Uh, that I, I, cannot, uh, say, I cannot comment. One thing is clear, that when we preach the gospel, or when we say God loves you, and this love is witnessed by your action, then certainly people may accept it, but may uh, accept that change. Okay. It is possible. Your position is that the Catholic Church is not involved in any conversions by inducement or allurement. There are no conversions that are reprehensible that your church is doing. Never. Then let me quote to you some of the provocative and offensive statements of other smaller Christian denominations. The Southern Baptists write, more than 900 million people are lost in the hopeless darkness of Hinduism. The AD 2000 and beyond denomination claims it's time for Christ's salvation to come to Calcutta. Archbishop, those are the sentiments of groups of people who look upon the Hindu faith as inferior and believe that the salvation of Indian souls lies in converting them to Christianity. Do you condemn that sort of derogatory attitude to Hinduism? Certainly. Certainly. Do you dissociate your church from them completely? That I cannot say because if that church is going away from the uh, principle of the church and the teaching of the church, I have to. But when this church, the Southern Baptist or the AD 2000 and beyond, talk about Hinduism steeped in darkness, talk about Satan conquering Calcutta, all of those are things that they've written about, do you at that point dissociate the Catholics from them? I, I would say this is wrong language and this is not the way how to present the truth. And therefore, are you also saying that these are people who are themselves giving the Christian church in this country a bad name? Uh, if these statements like that, if they are made, and I hope it is not true, and uh, if they are made, certainly they give a very bad image of the church. Archbishop, it seems one thing has emerged from this interview, that there are reasons for distrust of almost equal amount on either side. The church, as you said, feels threatened, it feels insecure, some Christians feel scared in their own country. On the other hand, there are many Hindus who say that the church is exploiting the poverty and illiteracy of Hindus to try and convert them. And some elements of the church, such as the Southern Baptists, are in fact spreading a message derogatory of Hinduism. How do we break out of this cycle of discord? How do we bridge the gap and come together? Perhaps since the uh, big discussion is on conversion, this concept has to be studied in depth. And you're asking the Hindus and you're asking your critics to understand what the Christian church means by conversion before and they what, comment on it. And what it does. But are you prepared to also sit with them and explain yes, to them am, so that their distrust I am, ends? I am fully prepared to listen to them and to uh, give uh, my explanations and uh, just ask them to understand it. And if they have anything to be clarified, I am ready to clarify. One last question, Archbishop. Are you prepared as an Indian to put aside religion and reach out to other Indians as your brothers and say, let's sort this out, we are one? We are one. That's the message you're giving. I have no doubt about it. I insist on that. And we are really 
Indians and as Indians, we are Babis. Archbishop, for this interview, thank you very much indeed. Very good. Well,